Hi, I'm Michael LaFosse from the Origami Doe Studio, and here's my origami interpretation of a right whale. Right whales do not have dorsal fins. You see there's no dorsal fin here. Here we have a nice tail fin. There's an eye. It's a baleen whale. You can see a rostrum up here and then the lower jaw. No ribs under here and simple fin at the front. Let's learn to fold this origami whale. I'm using a lighter shade of gray for this demonstration so that the folds will show up more clearly than on black. And I'm using origami paper that's colored white on one side. If you're using origami paper like this, begin with the non-white side facing up. Fold edge to edge in half. Unfold. Fold the bottom corners in edgewise to the crease. Turn the paper over to the other side. Use the vertical center crease to align the left and right edges to the center, like this. Take the free edge at the furthest end, fold it to the top edge, align this folded edge with the white edge you see here, and unfold. Then rotate the paper. Now you can take that same free edge at the far end, fold it up to the new top edge, make accurate diagonals, and unfold. Unfold the paper completely, white side facing up. I have the folded square corners, there's creases here, at the top. And then you have this unusual shape, like mirrored L's at the bottom. Let's begin by folding these two square corners over, using the creases as guides. And now we're going to use the crease pattern in this area to bring the sides in using the big valley crease first. And then this angled 45 degree crease over. And then we're going to follow the crease here and there to flatten this shape. Here's a trapezoid. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, beginning with the valley crease, and then the angled valley crease here, and then flatten the shape. Turn the paper over to the other side. I'm folding the edge over. I'm going to have a limit here, and I want this flap to come out from underneath. The other limit is this corner. So once you have found those two end limits and making sure that this flap is out, you can flatten the shape. And you see it's our trapezoid. It's been toggled out to the front. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Now. Notice these folded edges to put mountain creases on the outside surface. And the limit is the end of this corner. It's most comfortable to turn the paper this side up so that you can fold over. And you can see the edge and its limit end here. So once you have done that, coax the paper flat just at that length and there's the mountain crease. Let's do the same thing with the other half. These will form guiding creases that are very important to the next step. On this side, they're valleys, and here we have the underside facing up. These corners will become the pectoral fins. So to begin to make those, take the square corner folding over. The limit at this end is at this corner. 
and we're going to place the square corner on the crease. So if these two conditions are met, stopping here and stopping at the crease, you'll get the right shape. Let's do the same thing with the other fin paper. This is a pectoral fin and it's going to be up at the front of the whale. Fold right about there, just so that you have some paper outside the area of the body. And then notice these short cut edges. Fold each one to align with its folded edge and like that. Unfold, lift up the free layer and turn it over. Don't flatten it all the way to the tip. Choose some degree short of the very end of the paper, something like this. We're gonna do a similar thing at the back end. So again, find the crease end, which is here. That's your pivot point. You can lift the free layer up and over onto the fin paper. And I like this one to be even shorter than the front, like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And these don't have to be symmetrical close will be good enough. There. Fold the paper in half lengthwise. Here you can see the front of the whale. Here is where the tail will form. And we're going to begin by inside reverse folding this triangular area. The creases are already there for you to do so. You're going to take this bottom horizontal folded edge and turn it up and over to align with that crease. Now see what happens when you begin to do that. This layer will come up with it and you want that to happen. You want to open it like a cone and squash it flat symmetrically. Now bring this fin back down. And you can see the new crease we've made here. This is our next guide. We're going to take this short folded edge over onto and align with that crease. It's most comfortable to rotate the paper the other way so you can fold away from you. Here's the short edge and you align just with that crease and then flatten. It'll stop up here somewhere, like that. Now let's bring this fin back up, flip the paper over to the other side and fold the other tail fin or fluke back up to match, like this. Let's fold this fluke down and at a slight angle and let's fold the other one now to match on the other side. Like this. Now if you wish you could leave the tail fin just like this. But I have a more finished way of doing this. We're going to begin by taking this folded edge here and folding it to align with the bottom folded edge. like this, and then lift up the layer and watch what happens here. Push this down and inside reverse fold this portion of that fluke. You can shape to any angle or degree you like, like that, and then copy it on the other side. Again, edge to edge first, then the inside reverse fold, and copy the shape that you've done before, which is against the table, 
like that. Then you can bring the flukes out like there. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to flatten the fluke so we can do the rest of the work. You could leave the front of the whale just this way, but I have more detail to add. Look at this crease I'm burnishing here. That can help with the next step. Take this folded edge and fold it to align with that crease. And you can see what it does here to the shape of the lower jaw. And then we can use this corner for an eye, just folding a little bit over like this. There's the eye. You could even open that layer later on. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Here's our guiding crease. Edge over. Fold the eye. And you could leave this shape as it is, or you could take some of this angled corner here, folding it in, adding another facet copying it to the other side, which gives a more gradually rounded shape here. And here we have a simple origami right whale. Taking the simple right whale pattern that you've just learned, you could three-dimensionalize it as I've done here. The right whales have two blowholes at the top and it's a V-shaped area. And you see what I've done here is I've used these mountain creases that were already installed in your earlier work to flatten the top jaw out. And I've also pulled open the front end like this. The paper has pleats that can be stretched in that way. You can also bend the hinge of the pectoral fins out here I've opened the eye, and also the back of the body, I've put creases here and there to flatten this out, and you see how three-dimensional this whale is. So here's how I did that. First, I opened the eyes. A small tool helped to make this small area open, and then flattening the connecting area. There's the eye open, like that. I would do the same thing on the other side, of course. Now, to make the top three-dimensional. You see we have these mountain creases that are already existing. Simply flatten like this to make a kind of table area here. And then you could sharpen or reinforce these mountain creases here. I also work the very end by pulling the pleats open like this. You don't have to open them too much, but they will stretch open. And then you can shape the front end like that. At the back, to support a three-dimensional shape going back to the tail, I bring the paper underneath over, like this. just to put some pleats. And then set the fins out and flatten. And there you can see we have three-dimensionalized our whale. And it makes a very fine sculpture.